Hello everybody and welcome to Mastery's English Pro channel. In the previous video, we learned about persuasive writing and its importance in our life. We saw that persuasive writing has three pillars, ethos, pathos and logos. Ethos is that part of our writing where we build trust in our audience by using expertise or experience. Revisiting ethos, look at this poster of an app. It mentions that the soup is recommended by the American Heart Association, which is an organization that specializes in heart research. By adding this to the poster, it proves the audience trust in the product and they are now more convinced to buy this soup. If you look at an ad of an NGO, you'll notice that it shows a video of a child in distress, an animal in need of help, a house affected by a natural calamity and stuff like that. You'll also see NGO helping those in need. This is done in order to evoke an emotional response in an audience. Showing such videos generates various emotions in the viewer. Emotions like sadness or happiness or maybe even pain and anger. Creating these emotions is extremely important. Now before we talk about the importance, let us look at another example. You'll notice a similar trend in the ad of a regular toothpaste. A person will have a severe pain in their teeth and will start using the advertised toothpaste and later he or she will be seen enjoying a nice ice cream or a candy. Now what the ad is doing here is that it is relying on two emotions. Pain because of the tooth problems and joy after getting rid of the pain thanks to the toothpaste use. This part of a writing where we try and evoke some kind of emotion in our audience is called pathos. Pathos helps in creating a stronger bond with the audience who are now more likely to agree with the speaker and act because their emotional core has been engaged. Remember Adam who wanted to convince his parents to change his curfew from 8.30pm to 10.30pm but failed to do so? Let's look at his note and see where he can include pathos to improve his argument. Adam writes, all my friends had attended the annual function of our school, which I couldn't because of my curfew. They were discussing how amazing it was for an entire week and I felt so left out. You see, in addition to ethos, how Adam was able to make his parents a bit emotional regarding his curfew, including this in his note, definitely made his parents consider his request a bit more. So, till now we have covered two pillars of persuasive writing, ethos and pathos. Let us now cover the last one which is logos. To understand logos, let's revisit the example of an NGO broadcasting a television ad. You will notice that along with an extremely emotional story, the ad tends to give us a lot of factual information like 6 million children die of hunger each year or the earthquake left 20,000 people homeless. We will find a similar pattern if we look at the example of a toothpaste ad. Now the company selling the toothpaste really wants their viewers to buy their product. So what do they do? They add facts like 9 out of 10 dentists recommend this toothpaste or this toothpaste has fluoride and other important minerals that will kill 99% of germs in your teeth. This is logos, the part of a writing where we include facts, numbers, statistics and general information to back our stance. Human beings are extremely logical animals and need to be well aware of important facts and details before buying something. Thus. Logos plays a huge part when we are trying to be convincing. Coming back to Adam's note and his curfew timings, let's see what facts and details we can add to his note to make it more convincing. Maybe something like this perhaps. I request you to extend my curfew from 8.30 to 10.30 pm for all days. This will allow me to sit for the entirety of the study session at Amit's house and I won't have to leave in the middle of it. My daily schedule is a bit hectic and the extension would allow me to study, hang out with my friends and even have some relaxation time which is very important and healthy. I assure you that the change in my timings would not interfere with my grades or household chores. 
I hope you consider my request. I think Adam did a good job here. Don't you guys think so too? Okay then. So in this video, we looked at pathos and logos and how they help our writing become more persuasive and convincing. Now, let's look at a few examples before we conclude this video. This ad is clearly designed based on pathos as it is trying to evoke sadness and empathy in the target audience. It is trying to convey an idea that dogs in shelter need a loving home and that we should take some action. Here's another ad that conveys the same idea. This ad too makes use of visual elements like a crying child to make its audience emotional so that they would feel the need to do something to help with the global hunger crisis. In the final example, we look at this advertisement of a tablet for the flu. What are they doing here? They are clearly mentioning an important chemical that the medicine has. So here, the company is employing the concept of logos to convince its audience to purchase the tablet whenever they have a cold. So these were a few examples where we saw logos and pathos in action. Now before ending this video, I would like to give you guys another assignment to practice logos and pathos. You can write your answers in the comments below so that I'm able to check your answers and let you know how awesome you did. The topic is the same as the last video. You have to convince your parents to buy you a brand new mobile phone. In the next and the final video of this series, we are going to talk about a hidden pillar of persuasive writing, which is known as Kairos. The thing about Kairos is that it isn't usually visible on the surface, but is always present in the background. When used correctly, this hidden pillar can boost the effect of ethos, pathos and logos in a request exponentially. So I hope to see you guys in the mystery class next time. Don't forget to leave your answers in the comment section below. Bye.